Hi YouTube! Today I will be reviewing the Tandy WP2 word processor from 1989. I'm recording the audio for this video off of my wireless headset, so hopefully it's improved relative to my past videos. Anyway, I got the WP2 shown here for $20 on eBay recently and upgraded it with an additional 128K of RAM by plugging in a 628128 RAM chip. It's an excellent word processor in the same slab form factor as AlphaSmart 3000, QuickPad Pro, Amstrad NC100, and TRS-80 Model 100. It also has a built-in terminal emulator and the ability to run the fourth programming language, so it's quite versatile. It even can run a Z-Code interactive fiction interpreter, but unfortunately that project was not well documented. Sadly, it cannot run CPM, so it cannot compete with the Amstrad NC100 or the Epson PX4 and PX8. The WP2 is a clone of the Citizen CBM 10WP word processor. It runs on a 5.5 MHz Z80 clone processor, has 256K of ROM, 32K of RAM standard, expansion for up to 128K of RAM additionally as a RAM disk internally, and 128K on additional RAM card, as my CAD agrees. There is about 22K free initially for text in the main RAM. The WP2 also includes built-in serial, parallel, and cassette ports for file transfer, printing, and saving files, respectively. It can connect to a modem through its RS-232 serial port and dial numbers stored in a user directory. The built-in software includes a word processor, terminal emulator, and file management system that accesses the main memory, RAM disk, RAM card, diskette, or TPDD, and cassette. The built-in software suite is quite intuitive and it includes extensive help utilities, as I can show you there. And I'll press escape to leave that. On the front of the machine are the blue power button in the upper right-hand corner. 80 by 8 green monochrome LCD, and a full-size keyboard. The green LCD is quite pleasant to read. Indeed, it's better than the Dana and NC100, but probably similar to the AlphaSmart 3000 and TRS-80 Model 100. The keyboard is more like a mechanical PC keyboard than those of the other word processors I tested. The feel is excellent, and the travel is quite deep compared with other models. The key travel is great sure is and my cat loves it as well it's really a nice keyboard but honestly I don't think it outshines the Dana and with that let's flip to the bottom and take a look at the different ports and features on the sides of the device On the bottom of the machine is the main battery cover down here, backup battery cover at the left, two folding feet to improve the viewing angle, and the word processor shortcuts printed in relief. I also shouldn't forget the reset button over on the left side. The WP2 runs on four AA batteries and requires a CR2430 button backup button battery to function properly. Without the button cell, it beeps and keeps a permanently flashing screen. I haven't figured out how to disable that other than installing the button cell. On the left side of the machine is a slot for a RAM card. This seems to be quite rare, unfortunately. It would have added up to another 128K of memory to the machine. On the right side are the contrast wheel, obviously for adjusting the contrast of the LCD, and a memory protect switch to ensure the memory is not erased during a battery change. On the back of the WP2 are the power jack at the left, cassette port, parallel printer port, and serial port, respectively. The WP2 can be powered by a center negative DC power supply. The power supply needs to be 6 volts DC, 
but only 200 milliampers or higher. So not a very high requirement for current to run the device. For demos, I'll try out the word processor and the terminal emulator. When I turn on the machine, we are looking at the first document, test.do, as we can see when I press F2 status. You can see test.do just faintly in that corner. Press escape to get rid of the status line. To go forward, back, uh, let me just uh, make that stable real quick. To go forward, uh, back, up and down, of course I'll use the arrow keys. But I can move around in other ways. I can jump from word to word using the shift key and the right left arrow keys. As you can see here, I'm jumping from one word to another word by pressing shift right arrow. Okay. Now let's try the clipboard. For this, I'll first move the cursor to the appropriate word and press F1 select. Okay. I'll try highlighting going down and highlighting Z code. I'll get the first letter of Z code, press F1, and then uh, select, which is 9 over here. Okay, so I press F1 and select. I'll move the arrow key to highlight the selection. And then I'll press F1 copy, F1 copy up here. Uh, you see the reverse video, turn back to plain video, because that, see, that uh, word was copied. I'll go down to the target location, okay, the end of the document here, and then press F1, paste, and voila, the selection is pasted into a new site. I can select this again and then press F1, cut to remove. I'll go back to the beginning of that pasted selection. Uh, F1 select, go right, and then F1 cut, and then it is removed. Let's now try out the spell checker. Indeed, the supposedly misspelled words will not be all that surprising. I'll do F1, F2 uh, spell doc. Uh, not surprising there. Skip that. Skip. Uh, skip. And we're through with the document. Before I jump to the terminal emulator, let's take a look at a few of the other utilities. These are the phone book and calendar utilities, but honestly these look more like templates for the word processor. Let's start with the uh, phone book, F28. You can see there's some template, name, phone number, and other information, and then the calendar, a, um, oh, I might need an exit, not working. Okay, now let's do the calendar. Yeah, so a format for this this calendar document, month, day, year, um, hours, minutes, and then comment, you know, what's happening that day. So I'll do F2 exit again. There's also an excellent tool for file management, which we access via F2 and files. Okay. F2 files. Or exit. First, I need to exit, and then F2 files. Okay, and this lets us see what's in the five possible storage locations. The um, internal memory, that 22K I mentioned, RAM disk, which for me is 128K. As we can see, 120-something thousand characters free. Uh, the memory card, which we don't have and probably can't, and um, just and so on. Using this tool, as we'll see in the help utility, you can delete files, manage them, copy files between different storage locations. Okay. Now the diskette drive happens to be compatible with Tandy portable disk drive emulators such as MCOM for Android and Desklink Plus for Linux. I'll first try copying some files back and forth from my Linux Chromebook that's running DL Plus, and I'll show you that in just a moment. 
All right, I now have my Linux Chromebook out. I've set up the Desklink Plus emulator, to, and I have it running now in WP2 compatibility mode over the USB serial adapter and its connection to the WP2 through a gender changer and null modem adapter. It's again connected to the WP2 serial port, so I can go ahead and copy files back and forth from one device to the other. Okay, so what I've done now is gone ahead with the TPD client on the WP2 and looked at the contents of the, the server, the TPDD emulator that's running on the Chromebook. And you can see there's another version of test.do. I'll press F1C and I want to copy it from the diskette to main memory and I'll overwrite the existing file. And let's take a look at the contents. Hopefully that'll be a bit longer than the original uh, test uh, um, deal. Working, and we'll let it think, and it is. Get rid of that um, status bar. And I have a little more text in this document about uh, WP2 fourth which I'll show you just briefly in the video. But anyway, this is showing you that the WP2 works really nicely with diskette drive emulators that can run on Linux or Windows. If you don't know, TPDD is Tandy Portable Disk Drive. This was a serial floppy drive that would connect to the Model 100 or WP2. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about magnetic storage and you know issues with belts falling apart and, and other things that would come with having an actual TPDD. We can emulate it on Android, in Windows, in Linux, and just rely on solid state storage and, and connections that are much more reliable. Now let's take a look at the very simple terminal emulator. I'll try it out with a Getty on my laptop, which passes a Linux console over the USB serial adapter. It does that with appropriate term cap for this terminal emulator, a WP2 term cap, a link to which will be in the description. Before I do that, I'll make sure that the settings are configured properly here. I want RS-232C instead of the modem, 9600 baud. I wish I could use MCOM on my Android tablet, but for its modem service, which would pass a Telnet connection over USB serial, I need a connection speed of 19,200 baud, so I think that's really only good for the Model 100, 102, and 200. I'll go ahead and continue here. A word length of 8 bits, no parity, one stop it, enable software flow control, uh, no printer echo, and then full duplex. Okay, I'll go ahead with that. I think that's all set, so I can go F29 for telecom, or, or actually I might need to uh, exit or even uh, escape. Yeah, so escape, and then F2 uh, telecom there. RS-232C is ready. I'll run sudo a getty 9600 tty usb 0 wp2 on my Chromebook here. Just at the right, and what do we see? We see a nice login screen for Galliamos. I'll log in as myself, and then... Beautiful, and I've logged in. The term cap is unfortunately isn't nice for a lot of things. I think for Telnet it's probably fine, um, I, but it's really line operations that seem to be handled best. LS, DF, yeah, DF, and so on. I'm thinking of others. Maybe PSXW I could do here. See what processes are going. Quite a bit out of that. Uh, directory, CD. I can go to that TPDD directory. You can see the refresh rate's not all that quick. 
which is not the best terminal emulator, but it can do. There's test.do that I had copied over earlier. And anyway, so it works decently as a terminal emulator. I'll have to try this out later on with uh, Telnet or TCP SIR, which uh, would pass a Telnet connection over USB serial like MCOM does for, say, logging into the level 29 BBS. But anyway, that works okay, but the refresh rate's kind of slow, and maybe try this at 2400 baud. It seems not to be keeping up at 9600. Next, I'll give a quick peek at something really cool we can do with this. Program at fourth. There's a version of Camel Fourth that runs on the WP2. So finally, as I mentioned, I'll try out the Z80 version of Camel Fourth for the WP2. Unfortunately, it can't load anything from source, and it also can't save the dictionary back into the RAM disk. So I'll have to come up with words, or, or maybe someone else uh, can do that. Or both of us can do it. So I'll go ahead and try it out a little bit. I can type the lowercase word words to show the uh, built-in words in the dictionary. And I have a simple word for printing ASCII characters. I'll do colon test 255 do I emit loop. Okay, and that should work. And I'll type in test, and we can see the ASCII characters that are built in. So again, there's a lot of issues with Camel Forth, but if I can get this to load files from the RAM disk, from the diskette, and so on, and load those into the dictionary, you know, anything under 22K, that would be fantastic, and I'll make another video if I can do so. And with that, I conclude my review of the Tandy WP2 word processor. In the future, as I mentioned, I'll try trying out Camel Forth a bit more extensively, hopefully add those extra words. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below, and thank you all for watching.